Um, right next, next we have Jan Rizab from, from Social Bakers, which is a uh, platform allow, offering a lot of analytics and other things, but one of the basic functionalities that you can go to right now if you go to Social Bakers is to look and see how other brands or other Facebook pages in your market, in your category, are in a range of measures compared to yours. And uh, Jan is going to talk about how social me marketing measurement impacts business. Jan, welcome, the founder and CEO of Social Bakers. Thank you. Thank you. So, hello everyone. Um, you probably all are thinking after five presentations straight in a row after lunch, it's like, where's my coffee? And I understand that, so I have a proposition for you. If you stay with me for 15 minutes, take out your notes because, yes, it's going to be a little bit of a data overload. I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try and go slow, but definitely take out your notes if you want to save some of this information because after the fifth presentation, it might be a lot. And I promise good insights around social business and around our experience. Um, one slight intro about Social Bakers. We are a social media analytics company. Uh, we work with about 50% of the Fortune 500 companies around the world. We have 800,000 marketers visiting our portal, socialbakers.com, finding out different insights. And we have 1,800 customers all around the world, about 30% in Asia and the Middle East. If I look at how we view social media at Social Bakers and what we've been seeing among the audiences, our clients, and different people all around the world, is, is looking at different behavior towards social media, different attitude towards social media. One of the attitudes is kind of what we call a first generation, generational treatment, uh, the checkbox treatment, I call it. It's like, I have social as a checkbox. Do I have a fan page? Check. Do I have social care? To some extent, check. But this is not really the behavior that companies should have towards social media. So we call like the next generation behavior where you have really perfect customer care. Your metrics iterative driven. Uh, you, you, you do things very, very quickly. You engage, you advertise, you use custom audiences on Facebook or on their platforms. So this is next generation. And today I'm going to be talking about what it means to be that next generation business and what we've been seeing among all our clients across all different verticals and regions on how they perform. So example of first generation companies. Well, if I look at British Airways, one year ago, I sent them, uh, I sent them a message saying, guys, why, are you not re why do you have a closed wall on Facebook? Why are you not responding on Twitter? I mean, there was this guy that sent a, not this guy, but another guy that sent a tweet like, guys, I'm stranded, I'm going to be in Portugal, and I don't have my luggage, and I'll be here for two days. And I lost my luggage. Could you help me find it? They responded in three days. How can we help you? <laughs> three days. Perfect customer care. And, you know, that was a year ago, and I sent them an open letter and never published it. Um, but last week, this guy took a tweet, and he actually managed to pay $1,000 to promote that tweet. And not many consumers do that. They now call that complainvertising. It's a new term, three days old. We'll see if it catches up. But anyway, the campaign that then went on BBC, Irish Times, Guardian, everywhere you can think of, was probably a good couple hundred million worth of negative PR for British Airways that they could have avoided by just doing customer care properly. So that's the first generation company. And, and there are many examples of the first generation companies. It's typically the companies that would treat their fan base very, in a very basic way. It's a treatment where you would ask the company, OK, I'm going to US, and I need a closest store. I'm going to Palo Alto and New York. And they'd send you to the website that has the ranking. And you'd ask them, but could you help me pick out the right store? Do they have it in stock? You know, do I have to do all of this myself? And they wouldn't help you. But of course, there are next generation companies that we can look out. In the region, it might be companies like Samsung that do different things, on a, especially on a metrics-driven basis. We work with them in a few regions, including EMEA, and they're great guys. So KLM is another one. They, do, they have 100 employees working on customer care in 10 languages, and they have a guaranteed one-hour response time 20, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's amazing, and they're the best in the world in social customer care. Then we look at Nestle. This is, these are screens, for example, we've delivered in their, in their global data room. Hannelore has talked about their regional data room uh, earlier. And for them, this is a company that, like, 
three years ago, they've had a huge issue in social media. They basically kind of had an issue that they didn't listen to their customer and they really actually fought with the customers like, no, what do you think of Nestle? It's kind of our page. We do what we want. But they've transformed. And, and if we see like today being uh, Dell being a great example, I mean, what does really Dell have to manage? Dell manages one brand. Nestle manages so many brands, brands they've acquired, different brands all around the world in different categories. That's a much more complex task. And if we look at the next generation companies and their behavior, they're mostly real-time reactive behavior. Of course, pretty much jargony examples like Oreo today. Customer, they're customer-centric. They not, don't operate in campaigns anymore. They operate in always-on content, always-on reactive content. And they're metrics-driven, of course. When we looked into our data, we look at some of these companies. And if we look back to the first generation company, I know the gentleman from Coca-Cola presented earlier, and they're an example of something between a first and a next generation company. I mean, they have some elements of next generation, but then at a global level, they have one or two guys at Atlanta that you know, publish these things manually through the Facebook interface, and they publish it at a specific segment in time. And uh, I know, for example, the Czech guys at Coca-Cola, Social Bakers is from Prague in Czech Republic, we're proud, proud to be Czech. Um, and, you know, they sent him a, a, a status update one day, and the guy copied the text, please send the status update to B, and he copied it including the please send the status update to B, and then the status update. So this is what happens when you copy-paste it, and that's maybe why they have only 9% of their 17.2 million fans are regional, and most of them are kind of on, in huge markets only, or might have been their focus. But this is a very unique list we've done. It's the top brands in Asia. Uh, it's the first time we've compiled a list like that. I believe we're kind of just tweeting it around, around now. So you're going to see that on Twitter from us in a bit. This is also where the top brands on Asian pages are from, in which country, because on Facebook you can now, for example, see the local fan count. Clearly, there's not China on the list because you know, Social Baker sees that uh, you know, we don't monitor the Chinese networks yet. We hope to change that. That's why we're also here. But you know, India, Indonesia, Philippines, of course, are, are one, two, and three on that list. I'm gonna wait. You guys are taking a lot of pictures of that, I see. All right, I'm going to wait for you to finish those pictures. OK, finished. And, and Social Bakers provides beautiful dashboards like that to clients and helps clients to understand, OK, what am I doing better? I put in competitors, and you know, I, I see how they, how they perform and what they do. And we see three big shifts looking at our clients, looking at how they operate in social media. We see them focusing on content marketing, advertising, and social customer care extremely well. And let me, let me tell you kind of why I think that's the case. Um, in 2009, an average user on Facebook would be a fan of like five pages. Today, it's more than 50. And more than that, these pages in 2009 would have published like seven content pieces a month. Today, it's more like 40 to 50, some brands like 100, 150 per month. This is crazy. I mean, that's a lot of content. That's a lot more content for a single user to digest. We're even seeing countries that have, on average, 200 pages that they like and on average 140 content pieces per page per month. Do the math on how many content pieces that is. How many pieces can you actually manage to cope with? Because if you look in your newsfeed, you'll have five to 10 posts from brands, actually. And this is where we come to evolution of newsfeed advertising. This is data that, we've, that we, this is from our clients, um, quite a few of them. In terms of the ratio of advertising, the blue part is the marketplace ads, the ones on the right where they're not in the newsfeed. And the green are the newsfeed ads, including mobile ads. I mean, mobile only has newsfeed ads on Facebook. And there's a huge shift into newsfeed ads. I can guarantee you that there's not, there aren't, you know, Facebook's going to eventually drop those right-hand side ads, and it's going to be only the newsfeed ads at one point. Because newsfeed ads is what's relevant. It's content-driven marketing. So you see very much important to you know, be in content and look at metrics. We've, we've heard that today countless times, engagement rate, interactions, reach, and all these other metrics. It's critical to look at them, of course. Um, but the ad metrics kind of are taking over that, that part. And if we look at a certain Facebook post, a tweet, 
a certain, let's say I have a content piece. I want to send something to my fan base. It's not only about just sending it and putting it on Facebook, on Twitter. You have to advertise it. You have to put it to your fans, your friends of fans, different target audiences, or including custom audiences. You upload a certain custom audience, you advertise it there. Same on Twitter. I mean, that's like 10, 20 operations per single post on social media. Now, if you have 10 pages, that's 100 operations you know, that you have to do all the time. So imagine you know, the traditional way of like a content agency and a media agency that many of the brands might be using. How will these guys work together? Will they be calling each other every 20 minutes? Could you please promote this ad to this target audience? Oh, never mind. Could you please promote it to a, you know, yet another target audience? There need to be tools. Social bakers might have the solution coming out in 21 days. But anyway, that's, that's a whole other topic. And we've seen big changes happening in social media structures, in teams, how they operate, how they you know, change and how they uh, go, in including like customer care. And I'm gonna be, I have like two slides on how customer care teams operate, but including how companies apply posting. In our research, over 70% of companies said they'll want to do content internally. And what does that mean for the agency in the room? Does that mean they'll be helping out with the specialization? Well, it definitely means they're going to be doing all the things around custom audiences. Because custom audiences is not something that a brand can take in-house altogether. All, all so if I look at, for example, our social customer services things, we've, to my knowledge, been the first company to ever talk about social customer care as an important thing. We've been the first one to define basic customer care metrics. Are the people that tweet to you getting responded? Are the people that post on your page, are they you know, getting responded? And we published a lot of studies since 2011, and this has improved up from 5% of questions being responded to 62% where it is today. So it's, it's really increased heavily, and we hope for the continuing support of that. But it's also evolved internally inside these companies. So if we look at the sheer volume of questions, Typically, the digital marketing department can't really cope with a high volume of questions, so they would pull in the customer care department. In every case that we've analyzed companies that do social customer service well, it always ended up in the customer care department. It was run by digital, but customer care was involved and was owned the responding of the fans first. Of course, PR was always involved and digital marketing is always involved, but they own the responding fact. And this is, for example, the, how they're coping with it in terms of headcount. FT is full-time, PT is part-time. So you can see that if companies do it internally, they can cope, you know, if, if it's a team under three people, they can cope with a certain volume. If they can, they use an agency. But if it's a much higher volume than that, they actually, you build up an internal team. So if you have kind of more than 300, 400 questions per, per quarter, definitely put in a team in place, internal team in place. It makes sense. And this only looks at Facebook, so you'll probably have double the amount of questions, including Twitter and other networks. At Social Bakers, we always say social is not about one metric. It's about all of them. So, you know, when we started five years ago almost, it was about fans. Fans, fans, fans. Let's get those fans up. Oh, we reached a million fans. Oh, we reached five million. Great. But it's, it's not really about fans today. It's about activity, it's about engagement, reach, response time, and of course paid media metrics. And you know, some of them are more important than the others, but all together, the combination of them is important. And how we've seen companies operate with that are create metrics, metrics framework, measurement frameworks, uh, different things like a paid, owned, earned dashboards. And this is critically important for a company to self-reflect. If a, the best ways the companies have been using, for example, us, is that they've set up a competitive report, a top content report and a metrics report separately, and they sent that out to their entire team. Like a global team would send a content report worth 100 content pieces, 100 posts, across different social media sites, Facebook and Twitter, and they would send, put it in front of their team and said, these are the top posts in the industry of hotels, and this is what they've done well. And that immediately, in a learning way, makes the team think, aha, and with us, we could actually do that. And it allows them to really quickly iterate and make their post, apply their posting strategy and get better, which is what they want. 
And our research supports this. We, we've asked 1,500 marketers what priority would they put on different metrics. So you can see fan and fan growth actually has some of the lowest priorities. And you, know, you can see that for yourself. Engagement among the highest content shareability, customer care metrics, website visits from social media. This is a research of 1,500 marketers all around the world across different sizes of companies. Now I'll go a little too fast for you taking pictures, so you might want to be quick on those. So what do next generation companies actually do? Uh, three slides for 30 seconds, that's almost perfect. So might run a minute over. So they put the customers first. We talked about KLM. So being a next generation company, KLM is clearly there, both from a customer care perspective, content perspective, and advertising perspective. But not only that, we've, Social Bakers looks at loyalty on Facebook pages and Twitter. Uh, we look at the profiles that have engaged three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, and then look if these guys still engage with the pages today. And what we found is actually KLM has the highest amount of loyal users. That's the, whatever that color is, this color. Um, so it's the highest amount, and it accounts to 60% of their overall engagement. So they win in engagement because they have those loyal fans. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in the top five. But they're not top number one because of those fans. But what I don't want you to think of that only as ambassadors. That's very important for that. But it's also when you're doing paid media on social media, it actually takes in consideration the network that you have. So if you already have a very good engagement, then the friends of fans' engagement will be much easier and cheaper to get. So if you don't do that, it's, it's an issue. Um, they are metrics driven. They create scorecards, measurement frameworks. This is one we did for the body shop, looking at different regions, different performances. This is the 42 page long PDF. I think too long in this case, but um, I won't go through it, don't worry. And they find insights and they of course take them. You know, they apply them into the business. Um, this is a rather complicated one to explain. So we're, with the sake of time, I'll, I'll skip it. But we look at different industries and logically, different things work for different industries. So for airlines, it works to send out beautiful pictures to see, okay, these things really, you know, I really want to go to this destination, you know, and, and send out beautiful pictures from that desp destination and create aspiration. I want to go there. Yeah, I'll buy a ticket. And they might not buy it right away. And of course, they innovate. It doesn't mean that your next generation social media business today, that you're one in six months. This changes all the time. You know, it's, it's an everyday battle. And that's all, thank you.